day one of building a global e-commerce brand. So we just invested uh, six figures into buying into an existing brand. That brand is doing seven figures. They did about $7 million last year. Basically what we do is we said, let us buy the products from you as the brand and buy into the brand. And uh, then we kind of resell exclusively those products in all the other markets that are not US. So those markets right now are doing close to a million dollar a year uh, with almost no profit. <laughs> and the brand has a lot of issues and the brand is shrinking and the brand is dying a little bit. But we found all of those opportunities in that to actually scale the brand. So in this series, I want to take you on the, on the road, on the trip, show you what we actually do and do it very casual. Like we just finished up doing some product pictures here, as you can see. Uh, so I just thought I'd take the opportunity and take the moment to introduce the series of building our own global e-commerce brand. I, I'm going to be very, very transparent, show you everything behind the scenes, all the numbers and all the everything. The only thing that I can't show you is the actual products, the actual front of the business. I had the decision between I can show you all of kind of like here's the ads that we did and here's the pictures that we took and here's how the website looks like. But then I couldn't show you the numbers behind it. Or I can say here's all the numbers behind it and here's the concepts of what we did and how that impacted the numbers because then you actually get to learn the concepts and not just the one specific thing that worked for us, but why did it work? And then show you the impact of that in the numbers so you can apply it too. I can't show you everything together because that will interfere when we exit the brand uh, with potential buyers and private equity and all of that stuff. What's the plan? The plan is to grow two eight figures and I want to take you on the road. This is day one. Very first before we go in, my name is Nils Olderup. I live in China and I have a brand growth company in China where over the last five years we helped multiple eight figure brands or seven figure brands scale to and beyond eight figures uh, with their brand. We did all of the operation from building the stores, running the ads, doing the PR, working with KOLs, growing the business, data analysis, finance, supply chain, everything that the brands basically needed, uh, we helped them do and we helped them grow. And we never did it as a monetization thing. So we never did it like, let's build an agency and take a lot of money out. Everything we did over the last five years was all for learning how successful brands became successful and what we do to make them more successful. Now we're applying this to our own. With this brand in particular that we bought into, they sell expensive products, they sell heavy products, they sell electronic products. So they sell all of the products, all of the kind of products that normally people tell you to stay away from. But we see a lot, a lot of opportunity in that because there's so many challenges around it. When we were working with the brand, we doubled the profits of the business in 90 days. So for us, there was proof of concept of, hey, if we take on the brand, if we really focus on it, and if we do nothing else and just really grow that, there's a lot that we can do and there's a lot of money we can make. We had a 10 row as for marketing, uh, which was a good indicator. And I think the brand is positioned really well. So there, in, in that field, there's a lot of brands that are positioned in the very uh, premium, super high priced kind of range. This brand, because it's made in China, because we have supply chain right here and all of that, uh, we're actually able to sell that much, much, much cheaper but still with good quality. So the angle that the brand has is kind of like it's a premium quality with a regular price. So it's regular price, but with premium build. The value for that is amazing. So I think the positioning is really good. Now, basically what we do is we say, we buy the products from the brand. So we put our own money down to do the inventory. And in exchange, the brand gives us all of the traffic that they already have for the international countries. So that million dollar in revenue, the owner's just kind of gifting us. He's, he's sending all the traffic to us for free. Why would he do that? Well, he doesn't have the capacity to scale it. He doesn't know how to scale it in, uh, internationally and he doesn't have the capacity, he doesn't have the time. He's a product person. He wanna focus all of his energy on making better products, making them more amazing. That's like the biggest impact that he can have. And that's also the thing that he has most expertise in. So we said, okay, why don't you do that and you let us handle the international side? It will take six months where we're not making any money. So we'll need your traffic to send to us so we can grow it. So that was pretty cool. So here's what we've done so far. Basically, the very first six months, it's all about building infrastructure. Because it's a very different thing to take a brand as it is and just crank, we could just crank up the marketing and make money. Like we could actually do that. The problem is that there's a lot of things broken in the business. The support isn't so good, the shipping is slow. There's a lot of things. It's very difficult to find what is the right product. The website isn't good. All of these things are okay to crank up marketing and sell, but if we wanna build an eight-figure brand, 
that's not acceptable. Because if you scale a shitty brand, you basically scale shit, and that backfires. So then the same thing happens that with the brand happens now, is where they scaled a shitty system, and with a shitty system, people then are not happy. The customer experience is not good. The product experience is not as good as it should have been. And then they refund, and they don't buy. Then they uh, tell all their friends not to buy. Then you have negative word of mouth in the market kind of fighting against you. So that's no problem if you kind of go to like 1 million a year, 2 million a year. But if you want to go to 10 million, you have to have a better infrastructure. So the very first things that we did is uh, we're building that infrastructure. First, we're building the global store. So on the global store, that means, and Shopify makes that so fucking simple. There is a global market plan on Shopify that we're using where we have, I think, 10 markets in there. So the markets are split by different regions. What that allows us is to use the same Shopify store, the same domain, but have different languages, have different prices, have different uh, taxes, have different currencies, have different payment methods, have different shipping methods. If you're in Germany and you want to buy from the brand, you go to the US website, you buy in US dollar, you get the product shipped from China, which takes four fucking ever. <laughs> and you don't have your local payment methods. You only have credit cards and PayPal, but that's not how the Germans like to buy. So if we change all the things, that's kind of the first part of the infrastructure that we're putting in place so that we can convert much, much higher. That alone will make us profitable. At least that's what we think, and we will see, and I will show you. The next thing that we do is the website. The website itself, it looked very old, very outdated, so we just finished uh, shooting all the pictures here and make them nice, make them clear, make them clean. And the biggest thing when it comes to pictures or to the website is that people have it easy to find what product is right for them. I know a lot of people obsess about, you know, what's the right theme? What's the right, like, it doesn't fucking matter. The person who's looking for the product needs to understand if this product is right for them. Will this fix their issues or will that give them what they want? That's it. So on the website, you need to make it mobile friendly and you make it, need to make it very simple to compare. Now this brand has about, it's, it's selling the same product, but it has about 20 different variations of that product, different sizes, different functions, different features, starting at $500 going up to $2,000. So how does someone know if it's the right product? So we build a quiz, we build a support platform, we build customer support. So we're training support people to be in the local time zone. When someone messages us, those people can guide them through the process, choosing exactly what is the product for them, what is the best thing that they can use, and which one they should buy right now. Because at the higher level price points, it's very important, like people don't do impulse purchases. They do some research, they look at some testimonials, they look at uh, influencers on YouTube, they look at Instagram, they look at your content, they look at your brand, they, they look at how does the website feel like. So and if the website feels like spammy, direct response marketing, countdown timers, urgency, only five left in stock, they're not, they're not gonna buy. But if you have a very professional looking website, it's like, oh, this actually looks like a big company would look like and pictures actually look really nice and actually kind of beautiful here and I like the fonts and everything looks congruent and kind of feels like pro it is professional, now they're likely to buy. That's really what makes that work. Okay, third thing we're putting in place is uh, logistics. So I'm gonna take you to the factory with me and show you a little bit behind the scenes of how these things work because one of the most important parts when you're not doing a drop shipping business, when we're actually building a brand, when you're buying your own units, when you're doing all of that, logistics and supply chain, that's, that is your business now. So initially you spend all of this time on marketing. For us, marketing is almost like an afterthought. As long as the right infrastructure is in place, as long as the brand has a good reputation, marketing takes care of itself. It's not, it's not, even, it's not even a challenge, it doesn't matter. The real core of the business is inventory planning, cash flow planning, uh, supply chain relationships, so relationships with your suppliers. Now you need to plan ahead. If you buy products up front, all your cash goes up front. Do I do air shipping? Do I do sea shipping? What's my shipping times? When do I need to replenish inventory? How do I plan inventory? How do I forecast cash flow? All of that becomes a, a big, big consideration. Just to recap what we already did and prepared. We finished the website, signed up to all the different payment providers, made pictures for the page, and that site is kind of done. Now we're working on support, training the support people, making sure we have guides on the website. When the product is broken, how can people fix it? How can people reclaim it? What's our warranty policy? All of that. That's what we're working right now. Next then will be all about 
uh, supply chain, shipping, 3PLs, which is third party fulfillment centers, uh, logistics, cash flow planning, inventory management. Because when you're not drop shipping anymore and you have to prepay all your products and the shipping for the product, you have a completely different set of, of uh, considerations. Now it's like, okay, I can only afford so much inventory. And even if the ads are really well and they're working like crazy, you can't scale them because you don't have stock. And it takes you two months, three months to replenish stock. Those are very different considerations now. So if you're starting your own brand or if you already have an own brand or an e-commerce business like that, I welcome you and I invite you to follow this because we're going to go really into the details and I'm going to show you the... Uh, forecasts that we have, the breakdown of the numbers, the cash flow, the units, the inventory planning, all of the boring shit that you never consider when you start, but that is actually the core of running an e-commerce business. And that's something, if you want to build an eight-figure brand, that's something that you have to master. So the same way that you have to be great at marketing for a dropshipping business, you have to fucking master all of those boring backend things when you're building a big, big business. So the goal is for us to sell this down the line and uh, do it for life-changing money. So welcome here. Please subscribe if you like it, if you want to follow us for more. And if you're interested into more tactical things, let me know in the comments below what you want to know, what you want to learn of, and then we can make videos specifically for that. Take care. Thanks for joining. Welcome here.